Okay, so as much as I'd like to have my own workshop, I don't. So the first step is to pull out the cars and set up all my tools. Get the bike down so I don't hit my head on it. Setting out the boards so I don't so I can keep them straight. That masking tape has labels to tell me which board goes for what. And there I'm setting up my table saw. Um, a lot of work just to set up the tools. I wish I could leave them out, but I can't. Making sure there's enough clearance in each direction. Those Lowe's buckets are a dust collector I made. I'll, I'll link to the video on how to make those. They're pretty cool. And I'm bringing down the vacuum. I can run it from up on the ceiling, but I didn't want to trip over the cord. Getting the miter saw all set up. So I can start right at 11 o'clock. Since it's Saturday, I didn't want to start before that. All right, here I get started on cutting the boards that I don't have to rip, so they're longer than, I mean, wider than two and three quarters inches. Um, and my miter saw can't cut a five and a half inch board at one pass, so I have to do it twice, once, and then flip it over. Once I get all the wide boards cut to the correct length, then I go ahead and rip all of the rest of the boards, because the rest of them are all two and three quarters, which is almost exactly half of what these boards are. So this is me just ripping all the boards in half, and I'll cut them to the correct length later. Back on the miter saw. And... Lots of cutting. Alright, so now I'm going to hook back up the miter saw to the dust collector and cut all the boards to length. Um, so after this step, I have all of the boards cut to the correct length and width. Um, and then I do, once I get them all cut to the correct length and width, I um, do all the little angled cuts or little, cut out a few notches and some boards. But um, I, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a stop block. So once I measure one board I cut all the rest that are at that same length and that way I don't have to I only have to measure once per length. So I'm done with the miter saw so now I um, am setting up all of the angled cuts and this is a really cool jig I made or right there you see me with the template but um, this is a jig I made that holds the board exactly the way you want it so all you have to do is pass it through the table saw and it, it's repeatable and, and makes it really straight perfect cut with very little setup time and I actually got smart this time and made pencil marks exactly where the board goes so that next time I don't even have to trace it with the template I can just put it on the marks that I made on the board with the little hold down clamps as you see there all right uh, now I'm doing my angled cut that where the blade is at an angle, there's one board that supports the back that's at an angle there, so I did that. Um, little pizza break. I'm putting away the table saw because I'm done with it. Make room for stuff for the next step. Alright, I'm notching these boards that are going to be the backrests. Got a little notch in each one with the jigsaw. Now I'm cut, I'm getting my hole saw on my drill and cutting out the cup holders on the armrests. In between each step I clean up a little bit. Now I'm getting ready to set up my router table that I made. Um, it's just a normal router that I mount upside down, hang in from the board and clamp it to the table and then put a board on it that has a port for dust collection because this router makes a mess if you don't have it hooked up to the shop vac. Now this is just me running through every single board on that thing and, and there is a lot of them so this takes, takes quite a bit of time. I wish it was this fast in real life. And this quiet. The thing is loud.
this just puts a nice uh, rounded edge on all all uh, four sides of the board eight really because it's four sides on both front and back Chris showed up to help me um, say and since these chairs that I'm making I'm making two chairs at once so every step you see I do I'll repeat it but um, he is going to help me sand, which is my least favorite step. I like I like cutting and building, but man, I hate sanding. He did a really good job. So his video is boring because he just sits there and sands every single board, front and back, side and side. But while he does that, I give him the boards in this in the order that I need to build the chairs, so that um, we we do a good pretty job pretty good job matching up with each other and. Um, as soon as he's done with a set of boards, I give him the next set and I put together those boards. There you saw me rounding the edges of the armrests. Um, so I, I have to set up my router table again real quick, this time without the fence so that I can round off the rounded edge of the armrest. Round in the middle of the cup holder so that it is smooth and so that the cup holder recesses just a little bit. Now I'm finally setting up to build the chairs because we've got all the boards ready now that Chris has that first set sanded. Um, take a little break. All right, I'm starting to build the, build the chair now. This is the two legs and the um, seat slats. Having the shop vac hooked up to the sand palm sander really eliminates a lot of dust, which helps your lungs, but it also helps the sandpaper last longer, and it helps it do a better job sanding because there's no dust gumming up the sandpaper, and it really helps. But, man, is it annoying because it's loud. I'm sure my neighbors hate me right now. So I built the first chair. You'll see it sitting on the ground over on the right, the seat part of it. Now I'm repeating that same exact step for the second chair. Each screw I put in, I clamp first so that the screw holds it nice and tight. All right, now I'm building the first back rest. Um, nothing special here, but after I'm done built, you know, screwing it to the support, you'll see me turning it over and I round off the edges and sand it and route it so that the rounded top of the backrest looks nice. That's what I'm doing now with the jigsaw. Setting up my router to be a normal router as opposed to attached to a table. Now I'm building the second backrest. Same exact process. Chris is starting to sand the armrest now because that'll be the next step. rounded edge on the second backrest. All right, so I get the chair base that I built and I, I clamp two temporary back uh, supports that won't be there in the finished product, but it helps support and get the armrests at the correct height and make sure they're level. Um, putting on the armrest supports. Um, now that Screw in place the armrests and the back support. Once I get that all set and screwed in place, then I can put the backrest back in and screw it into place. Once that's done, I can remove those temporary legs. Um, and all that's left to do is put a couple boards on the front, which I'm about to do there. And then this chair is done. Just got to, after I put the second front board on, uh, just got to sand again to cover up all the countersink or to smooth up all the countersink screws that 
I put on there, but it's done. And now I do the same thing for the second chair. And the second chair is done. So now it's cleaning up the garage. We load these into my car and Chris takes them to his house. I didn't, didn't even get to sit in one of them, I don't think. I will though later. Fire pit Friday at Chris's house. Now this is just me cleaning up the garage. Getting ready to park the cars back in it. And let's start to finish building two chairs. Wish it was that fast. <laughs>